What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with a quick review as I realized that I haven't actually done one in quite some time. So I'm doubling up on this particular review just because I had a chance to watch Westworld Season 4, Episode 5, the episode that starts with a Z that I can't pronounce yet a couple of times, so I can do a quick review there. And I finally had a chance to watch Thor Love and Thunder, so I wanted to quick give a quick update on that. So to start it off with Thor Love and Thunder, since that is the older of the two um, pieces of media, overall I thought it was a very good um, presentation of the Thor story. Uh, we have a progression of new Asgard, um, what Thor has been up to. I particularly enjoyed the storytelling of Korg. Um, I really didn't want him to die at the end of the film when we have the our heroes at the City of the Gods, so I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, so overall, it was basically just a fun time. It continues that fun adventures. Um, it based, For me, it basically presented Thor in Phase 4 as far as fun and entertainment and story progression, much like what we saw in Thor Ragnarok with its phase. So when you're watching the film, that's kind of, for me, it was kind of one of those things where it feels like that's kind of why people didn't like it as much. It wasn't maybe as uh, serious as Thor or Thor of the Dark World. But for me, it has its, its um, seriousness, but it's also pulling that transition. You know, we see the troubles of uh, Valkyrie trying to rule new Asgard. We see get more pro uh, story progression with Natalie Portman's character, so kind of trying to make up for not seeing too much of her in the previous films. Um, we saw a little bit of her here and there, um, and then of course they bring back Lady Sif, so it's having her um, story continue was good. So it doesn't necessarily address why we didn't see her overall the course of a lot of these films. We did have her cameo in you know. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but that was really about it, so it was good to see her on the big screen again. Um, but overall, it was basically just fun times um, countered with um, Christian Bale as the God Butcher, so it just feels like this was more of the Thor version of what we're going to have with more of the multiverse, the universe as a whole, and kind of bringing in more of those... Um, other world extra bits of information from the universe as a whole. So try to bring in more of the lore of some of that extra galaxy wide and universe wide bits of story, um, especially when we have all the various gods. We have Zeus, um, the introduction of Hercules, which actually to me feels kind of like their um, subtle way of saying that this is going to be how we introduce uh, mutants into the um, MCU so um, that's my more of my prediction as well so it's not necessarily something that's going to happen but just one of those things that um, where they will have to bring in mutants at some point so talking about Zeus and the old gods with their various powers and things like that and then Hercules and being the strong man you know the kind of the colossus of the old gods kind of thing so I'm really curious to see how all that goes. Um, and then, of course, having Natalie Portman enter Valhalla is going to kind of be a way to introduce the, I guess, gods or another way of having another army of good versus the army of evil of some sort. So uh, with all the Marvel announcements, with the Avengers coming eventually, Wakanda forever, um, Ant-Man, or I think another Ant-Man, more uh, galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy and all of that. So... It feels like Phase 5 was essentially just a stepping stone into the a larger universe, and then the next phase is going to bring in more of the mutant stuff, the galaxy, and essentially a lot of that more larger-than-life stuff, so more of the um, expanded universe source of information. So that's really all I have at this moment. Um, I'm working on a review to co um, con connect um, Thor to Star Wars just because... Halfway through the movie, I, it finally hit me why I like Christian Bale's performance. And it was along the lines of Emperor Palpatine. So if they ever do make a uh, um, young Palpatine story or um, kind of the rise of Palpatine, like when he was training with Plagueis or something related to um, the Sith Lords, the rise of the Sith Lords or something related to Bane and the Rule of Two then Christian Bale feels like he would play a good Emperor Palpatine. So 
I'm kind of trying to decide how to deal with all of that. Um, Valkyrie doesn't necessarily tie in, but I particularly enjoy seeing her in Thor and then um, now also in Westworld, or not now, but also in Westworld. So I'm working on that con- that review and that comparison, but Christian Bale as Emperor Palpatine or young Palpatine definitely would be an interesting portrayal of the character. Um, other than that, I mean, Christian Bale is really shown. I actually do need to go and see if he... Um, used his um, training from the machinist in this role just because of how skinny he looked or if he if that was all cgi or something like that he is a lot older now than he was in the machinist so it probably wouldn't be as healthy for him to do that so that's why i figure it was cgi but something to look up um so with that being said um or basically to round that out i'm working on that final review but overall it was good times thor love and thunder is the phase five version of what we saw in Thor Ragnarok. So I can't wait to see him in future films. So with that being said, um, as far as Westworld season four, episode five, the show is continuing to be an alpha and beta version of the machines takeover of the humans. We're starting to see how the machines had trouble controlling the humans and the starts of the, them starting to realize that. So with Tessa Thompson being the creator of um, this pre-matrix, so to speak, um, and being bored of it, what's going on, We and then also with the anomalies, the outliers, and all of that, we see that it is one of those things where they're going to have to go beyond their programming, iterate, and spend their resources to break free of their human um the human copies and the the human programming that they were originally designed to copy. So we'll see how they do, uh, handle the iteration. I have I did see a chart a little bit before this recording that um, the uh, show the season's not doing as well as it has been or has done in previous uh, seasons. That it's the lowest rated season of of the show so far. So to that, I kind of want to say that I, in general, agree with it to the point where, yes, it is a lot slower. I've had to watch each episode a couple of times so I can um, not miss the content because I will say a couple of episodes I have fallen asleep to it. But um, to that point, on the flip side, understanding what they're trying to do is also of particular interest. So for me, it is their way of introducing humanity's connection or that transition into the Matrix, but basically that televised dramatized version of the same thing of what the machines did to control people and their ongoing struggles with controlling the human race so on twitter somewhere i did make that comparison of all the different characters in westworld and how they relate to the matrix and i'm kind of also with the current episode i'm currently also realizing that teddy could also be the early version of morpheus um and um Dolores could, could potentially be a version of the Oracle and Trinity maybe a mix with um, her and Maeve I guess so kind of the programming is all mixed up so maybe over the course of iterations and upgrades and changes you know upgrading one program and deprecating another would have adjusted things like that around but basically the current version of Westworld is kind of like an alpha or beta version of the matrix so ultimately once we get to version one it is going to be a version that requires certain concessions to be made which is what it sounds like tessa thompson's character and the man in black are working towards so with that being said i like i said i'm overall i am i'm not saying that it's a bad season it is definitely very very slow and not too much action going on but um the subtle hints of what they're trying to do are very interesting so It feels like it's going to be one of those things where I will have to watch the episodes a couple of times to to make sure I understand what's going on in all the scenes and to see how they're progressing, um, at least my theory for what's going on, to see if I can prove myself right or wrong. If ultimately I'm wrong, then I'm I'm wrong, but uh, my current theory is they're uh, presenting a live-action, dramatized version of how the machines control the humans and kind of act as a pseudo-version of a prequel to The Matrix um in certain ways so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback uh thoughts of your own theories of your own um what did you like or dislike about um thor love and thunder or what are your current thoughts on 
season four of Westworld, then you can comment on this post on YouTube at youtube.com slash PatelN01 or on the Twitter pro or on the Twitter post at PatelN01. But thanks for tuning into this particular review, and until next time.